بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمد الشاكرين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها والنور الأبصار وضيائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكرك الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك الغافلون Today's session is with regard to the recent events revolving around a movie which was produced and directed by a sideline group within the Shia community led by the notorious Yasir al-Habib, whose name in reality should be al-Asir, Asir, the difficult one, Yasir is the easy one, Asir, and not al-Habib al-Khabith. This Yasir al-Habib has purported a narrative regarding Islamic history and companions alayhim ridwan. And of course, in the past, I attempted to tackle this issue many times with the Rawafid, engaging with the Shia, and with the release of this movie, this narrative now has been spread among some people through social media accounts and through the national media. I will analyze this in two ways, and also today. I will also be discussing the incendiary remarks regarding the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by a BJP parliamentarian in India and as well as the honor given to honorary award given to Salman Rushdie during the Queen's Jubilee on the weekend, last weekend. Firstly, with regard to the movie. This movie purports a narrative with regard to the companions Ali Muridwan, Sahaba Tul Kiran. My message to the Shia public, as well as the Sunni public, is that we must analyze this firstly theologically, and secondly, the political implications of this narrative. Firstly, in terms of theology. I would like to say that to claim that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away after having been poisoned by his wives according to this false fabricated version of events. If that were the case, that Na'udhu Billah, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was poisoned by his wives, then the responsibility of Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is undermined. Secondly, the narrative claims that not only the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was poisoned by his wives, wal-iyadu billah, the claim is that Sayyiduna Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha was also Murdered بالله, by a shaykhain. What do I mean by a shaykhain? Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an and Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an. This is the conspiratorial point of view within the movie. The very foundation of the movie is built upon this premise that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was murdered by his wives بالله, and Sayyiduna Fatima. Radiallahu anha was murdered by the Shaykhain, who are the fa fathers of those same wives of Sayyidatuna Aisha and Sayyidatuna Hafsa. Radiallahu anhuma. Now, addressing the Shia public who may be listening to this, I would want to say that based upon this premise, the emotive discussions, the emotional love, for the Ahlul Bayt is exploited 
through this narrative, this false narrative, that if someone has love for Sayyidatuna Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala anha, and then they are told that she was murdered by particular individuals, and as every Muslim has love for Sayyidatuna Fatima, radiallahu anha, and they have love for her father, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, this argument, this proposition, places down the foundations of all Shia theology. And this is why many of the Shia would want to debate Adalatul Sahaba, uprightness of the Sahaba. Now, uprightness of the Sahaba entails for Sunnis that a Sahabi is someone who saw or accompanied the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and passed away on Iman and faith. So he saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam or was in the company of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then believed in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, adopted al Iman faith and then passed away on al Iman. This is a Sahabi. The Sahaba Udul, which is which means that they do not make lies regarding the Prophet. This is the Sunni position. While the Shia they claim that this group of a Sahaba, even those Sahaba who spent lengthy time with Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq and uh, with like Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the Shia premise, they all left the fold of Islam and rejected tenets of faith as well as abused the Ahlul Bayt, the family of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can this be true when we have an individual who is known as Asadullah, the Lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the midst of the Sahaba, who is Sayyiduna Ali, Karram Allahu Wajhahu Al Kareem. Allah has ennobled His face. The meaning of Karram Allahu Wajhahu Al Kareem is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has illuminated and blessed His face because His enemies would curse His face. The Ahl Sunnah, His supporters, they said Karram Allahu Wajhahu Al Kareem. Allah ennobled His face. Allah has ennobled His face. Sayyiduna Ali radiAllahu an. The Shia premise or the premise that Asir al khabith has placed within this movie is false. It's a fabrication because it is built upon weak foundations. The very history of Islam is distorted and it is in fact an insult to the Ahlul Bayt. That those who believe in this conspiratorial view of Al-Islam that according to them, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam billah, was poisoned by Sayyidatuna Hafsa and Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anhuma, and then his daughter was killed by their fathers, the Shaykhain. And then for 1400 years, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been buried next to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, next to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhuma. We as Ahl Sunnah reject this wholeheartedly that it is illogical that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would place his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam next to his enemies in the grave for 1400 years. This does not make any rational sense textually, rationally and in terms of love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and love for the Ahlul Bayt. We do not believe that when we go to do ziyara of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the people next to him are unworthy of being buried next to him. We do not believe that. We believe they are worthy and they, are, they have special status. The shaykhain have a very high status. So to claim that they carried out such a horrendous act of murdering the daughter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an, who is known as Asadullah al-Ghalib, the dominant line of Allah, that even in Shia works, according to them, he picked up Sayyiduna Khalid bin al-Walid. Of course, this is not true, but it's in their fabricated books that he picked up Sayyiduna Khalid radiallahu an with one finger. 
They say he had an altercation with the Sahaba in Al Masjid al Nabawi and he picked up Al Khalid bin Al Walid radiallahu anhu with one finger and the people became frightened of Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu. In the Sunni sources, in the Mustadrak of Imam al Hakim, we know that he pulled the door of Al Khaybar from the fortress of Al Khaybar, he removed the entire door. And later on, over 70 people were unable to pick up the door. This man, Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, how could he remain silent if the wives of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had done this and not only silent, why would he not have taken retribution? As well as his wife, the blessed daughter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the most superior of all women, being murdered. What kind of logic is this, Ayyuha Rawafid? What kind of logic, what kind of religion do you have? Asir al Khabif. What kind of religion do you have? And this is why you avoided debates. This is why you avoided me in the past. This is why Al Rawafid avoided me in the past because when you face these type of points, you are unable to answer. You said, we want to debate Adalatul Sahaba, uprightness of the companions Ali Muridwan. Why? Because what the methodology of Ar Rawafid is, is to go through the books, find isolated reports, and within those isolated reports, what they do is attempt to find faults with the companions Ali Muridwan. Similar to the Nawasib, the Nawasib sect, they go through the works of hadith in order to find faults in the Ahlul Bayt. In the previous times, we had people going through works to find claims against Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They go through the works, they attempt to find narrations and ascribe them to Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu. The Nawasib attempt to find faults in the Ahlul Bayt and the Rawafid attempt to find faults in a Sahaba tul Kiram. But the claim of a Rawafid regarding a Sahaba tul Kiram is that 110,000 or so companions renegated, or even if we reduce that number to say that there were some supporters of Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an, they claim that tens of thousands of Sahaba renegated from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal-iyadu billah and murdered the daughter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this history has been covered by the Sunni Muslims for 1400 years. This is the conspiratorial view. Alongside this, the likes of Al Imam Al Hassan and Al Imam Al Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, they did not seek revenge for the murder of their mother. Even though the Shaykhain had passed away later when they grew old, when Sayyiduna Al Imam Al Hassan and Al Hussein grew old, the Rawafid have no logic. Why? Why, after the peace treaty, was Sayyiduna Al Imam Al Hassan and Sayyiduna Al Imam Al Hussein radiallahu anhuma going to the house of Muawiyah radiallahu an in Damascus, eating with him, and even taking gifts from him? When he gave them gifts, they accepted because he was a Muslim. And this is found within Rawafid sources and the sources of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. When you have these type of narrations, or the narrations of Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an and his close relationship with Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an that Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an he was the closest advisor to Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an This is why they say Sayyiduna Ali and the companions like Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an they didn't go out to the expeditions, the Fatuhat, the conquering of various lands, because they stayed within al Madina al Munawwarah to advise the Caliph, to advise the Khalifa, Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an. The close relationship between Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an cannot be dismissed historically. So the very premise of this movie is based on a conspiratorial view, which at most they may find one narration or two narrations within thousands and tens of thousands of Sunni books from which they derive a conspiratorial view because they read into maybe one line. 
So within thousands of lines within the Sunni works, thousands of lines of hadith, reports, they will find one or two lines and they will read into the lines. This is why many of the Shia, the Rawafid, who believe in this, believe in many conspiracy theories because they have a conspiratorial mind. They believe that tens of thousands of companions conspired against Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an. Yet, if the house of Sayyiduna Fatima radiallahu anha was burnt down by Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an, or the door was kicked in, or the child, she, uh, she lost a child according to them, waliyadu billah, and she died as a result. A man like Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu would not have permitted that action to have taken place. And if it did take place, he would have ha avenged the death of his blessed wife, Sayyidatuna Fatima radiallahu anha wa alayhi salam. But many of the Rawafid public, they are brought up like Imam Yusuf al Nabahani rahimahullah ta'ala states that they are brought up upon this theology. And when they encounter a counter theology, a theology which opposes this view, they cannot accept the counter narrative, the narrative of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Within the narrative of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we have many times companions, Ali Muridwan, disputing. And th those disputes occurred because they were human beings. Like, for instance, in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an had a dispute with his uncle Sayyiduna Abbas radiallahu an. Yet the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is consistent. We do not read those reports and then criticize Sayyiduna Abbas or Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhuma. Why? Because we hold all the Ahlul Bayt. And all the companions, as Sahabatul Kiram, in reverence and respect. We do not find human faults within the companions, and we do not attempt to read out those reports and make a conspir conspiracy theory as Asir al Habith has done. Asir al Habith, Habith hides away. He hides away because he cannot answer. It's a false pretext for anyone to claim that they do not face Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah pub, uh, ulama in public because the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah ulama have logical and rational proof in order to counter any claim. Our proofs are based on reasoning. Our proofs are based on the mind. Our proofs are based uh, sound textually, spiritually, and also intellectually. They cannot be countered. So the premise of the entire movie is based on this conspiratorial point of view. Now, that is looking at this narrative theologically, as well as the claim that it is an obligation upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down imams. This is a, a belief of the Shia theologians. They believe it's an obligation on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down imams, a'imma, to guide the people. So they believe Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an, his imama, his leadership was mansus, which is textually stipulated, stated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of thousands of companions. And the rejection of this is rejection of an article of faith, rejection of that which is known in religion by necessity. So that would entail that tens of thousands of companions, Ali Muridwan, left the fold of Islam. So if someone adopts a Rafidi, Shi'i theology, an outlook, that would mean Islam was disgraced from the onset. And Islam continued from such thoughts. And Islam has no izzah. Islam has no respect according to the Shia point of view because that would mean that according to them, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, according to them, to Asir al khabith and others, was poisoned and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu was incapable of avenging the death. 
It would mean munafiqeen. Hypocrites have been dominant upon the jama'ah that the Prophet ﷺ raised. This group of people that he nurtured, they believed the munafiqeen were dominant upon the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. It would entail that when the daughter of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ was harmed, her husband, uh, billah, was incapable of defending the honor of his wife. وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. Ittaqullah fi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you will all go into the graves. Tomorrow all of us will be entering our graves. If you enter the grave with these false beliefs regarding the daughter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam or the Ahlul Bayt and you believe in this disgraceful belief then you will face the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though you face the adab in dunya, how? Through self-flagellation, through self-flagellation, you insult the mother of the believers, Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anha, who Sayyiduna al-Imam al-Hasan radiallahu anhu wa alayhi salam. After the battle of al-Jamal, Sayyiduna al-Imam al-Hasan radiallahu anhu, he accompanied the mother of the believers from the battlefield of al-Jamal to al madinatul munawwara because that is his grandmother. She is also Ahlul Bayt. That is the grandmother of Sayyiduna Imam al Hassan radiallahu anhu alayhi salam. So if you adopt these beliefs, you are endangering yourself. You are endangering your akhirah, your hereafter. You are endangering yourself in terms when Malakul Maut, when the angel of death arrives with such false beliefs, the angels will punish a person who insults the Ahlul Bayt or the companions alayhi muridwan. The darkness of this narrative is such that it entails that Islam was a defeated religion from the onset and continues to be a defeated religion. But when you turn to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, when you come to the truthful way, to the way of Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an, because Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an is the Imam of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. How? On the member, on the pulpit of Al Kufa, Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an. Over 200 people narrate that Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an extolled the praise of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. When he was Khalifa in Al Kufa, he praised a Shaykhain Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq and Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Over 200 people narrate this. Yet the Rawafid, they adopt different beliefs, like a Nawasib. The Nawasib endangered themselves when they praise Yazid. The murderer of Sayyiduna Al Imam Al Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, or when they attempt to fault find within the Ahlul Bayt, when they read the narrations of the Ahlul Bayt and they attempt to fault find within the blessed personalities of the Ahlul Bayt, they endanger their Akhirah. So, the false premise of Asir al Khabith, the foundations are flimsy. And this is why none of them were able to face me in 2016 and they lied because they lying is a part of their religion. Lying is a part of their religion. Claiming that they are not recording when they are recording. Claiming and they believe this is permitted with the enemies, their enemies. But of course, the theology is flimsy. They are unable to defend it. The entire view is based on a conspiracy theory which falls apart when you analyze and critique like Sayyiduna Imam al Hussein radiallahu an associating with Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma as good friends and prior to Sayyiduna Imam al Hussein radiallahu an leaving to Karbala he meets Abdullah bin Umar and Abdullah bin Az Zubair radiallahu anhuma jma'in why would he meet and discuss Al-Islam in an amicable fashion, not like enemies, like brothers, like fellow Sahaba. And of course, Sayyiduna Imam Hussein was superior to them, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa alayhi salam. So, that is with regard to the narrative and the theological foundations. What are the political motivations and what are the political ramifications and implications. The implications are this, that firstly, 
Asir al Khabith is funded, we know, from unknown hands. His money is coming from unknown hands. We can guess as to what those hands are, but I will not uh, make uh, random uh, claims with regard to his funding. But there are people who have an agenda with funding this narrative. Our theological disputes will never lead Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a ulama to violence or to incite violence. Why? Because inciting violence only benefits the enemy of Islam. Theological disputes and theological debates can continue. But incitement to insult is done in order to cause an, a reaction within the Muslims in places like Al-Iraq, in Iraq today, in Baghdad, there is a division between the Sunnis and the Shia. Asir al khabith and these type of people work to cause political division within the Iraqi community in order to cause uh, factional killings, uh, murders, these type of things. This is one clear agenda from this uh, narrative. Additionally, cursing the, the Sahaba, Ali Muridwan, the Shia know that we Ahl Sunnah do not curse the Ahlul Bayt. In fact, we praise the Ahlul Bayt. We acknowledge the, their high status and they should not fall into this false claim that the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in terms of theologically uh, oppose the Ahlul Bayt, which is false. Even the Uthmani Ottoman Caliphate would ensure that the Amir of Makkah al mukarramah is from the Ahlul Bayt. The Amir of Ahl, uh, Makkah al mukarramah would always be a Sharif from the lineage of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even the Ashraf, they would wear green turbans in the Ottoman Caliphate so people could recognize that this man is a Sharif, a Sayyid, so they could respect him. They would also receive stipends and money from the, the Baytul Mal, the public treasury, the Ahlul Bayt, the Ashraf. They were always treated with respect within the Ottoman Caliphate. Also by a Sultan Salahuddin al Ayyubi. Of course, within the Bani Umayyah, who as a whole do not represent Ahl, uh, the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, but the likes of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an, who is a Sahabi, would sit with Al Imam al Hassan wal Hussein after the Sulh, after the peace, which became known as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Amul Jama'ah. This became known as Amul Jama'ah, the year of the congregation. This has always been the narrative of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So the Shia public should not believe many of the fabrications that they are brought up upon. That the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, according to them, despise the Ahlul Bayt or denigrate the Ahlul Bayt. And this fabricated story regarding the wives of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, or the Shaykhain, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq and Sayyiduna Umar. So the political implications are more than just causing a theological dispute. It can cause disunity to the point that cursing the companions in public leads to other acts which the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a ulama do not incite and have never incited. And those odd few who have are mistaken. So, secondly, with regard to protesting and our Sunni brothers protesting, there is nothing wrong with protesting on these issues on the part of the Muslims. But what the establishment wants is to ban such type of protests. And how they will do that is by claiming that impromptu sudden protests cause public uh, disorder by claiming that for instance if i post tomorrow we are all congregating outside mcdonald's and we will pro protest at 4 p.m and the public gather at 4 p.m they will claim this is causing public disorder uh, noise pollution but this is a false claim this will be done in order to Limit the freedom of people to protest. And I'll give you a clear example moving on to another issue. That is tomorrow, 
Muslims will protest outside the Indian embassy, which is a good thing. And Muslims should protest. They should utilize their right to protest and freedom of speech. But tomorrow is the weekend. And those who work in the embassy will not be there. So the protest will not have the desired effect. But why is this done? Because when you protest in London, in central London, the establishment only permits you to protest within a certain area. It only allows you to protest on certain times. It only allows you to protest on certain days to limit the effectiveness of protest. So limiting the effectiveness of protest is one of the agendas of the establishment. Limiting the protests in terms of people would need permits to protest, people would need to take prior permission from the police and the council, people would be limited with noise pollution. All of this is being done to curtail the freedom of expression, not only against Muslims, but also non-Muslims. While we must maintain the right to speak and the right to protest, we as Muslims and citizens, non-Muslim citizens, must maintain the right to protest on any given issue, the right to congregate on the road in public spaces. The right to congregate is the right of every citizen. So one of the agendas of the media is that the media did not highlight the protests initially. But when the cinema removed the movie from the uh, uh, cinemas, led by Molana Ijaz Ahmed and others, may Allah reward him. He also supported me in 2016 uh, against Asir al khabith and the Rawafid. But when people like him led these protests and the protests uh, resulted in removing the movie from the cinemas, then the media gave it complete attention. Why? In order to designate those protesters as being extremists. According to them, according to the media narrative, they are extremists. But why are they extremists? Because they say they are curtailing the right of the cinema to show the movie. But they will never say this regarding LGBT protests. They never said this regarding other types of protests which are allowed and permitted by the establishment. When the establishment want a particular agenda to go through, they will never label those protesters as being extremists. But the Muslim protesters are now being labeled as extremists because the agenda is to curtail the right to congregate, the right to limit the freedom of protesting. So do not be surprised in the near future if we have new laws, uh, a new legislation, and I would not be surprised with the conservative government or any government in reality with the likes of Sajid Javed saying that they have the right to freedom of speech in this country. But in reality, Sajid Javed and others know that the freedom to speak is curtailed in this country because there are many things you cannot speak about. There are many things you cannot state. There is so much uh, political uh, correctness in this country that it limits the speech, it limits the right to expression, and action of congregating and protesting and fulfilling the right to protest. So this is a, an additional agenda with regard to protesting and reaction. Which brings me to the BJP and what's going on in India, as well as the Muslim reaction in general. And I have stated this in the past. When they mock Islam, when the Kafir establishment, the Dajjalic, the Jalik in nature, meaning deceptive, and the Jalik even in its double speak, the Jalik in the type of language they use, they utilize like black and black crime. When a black person kills a black person, it's referred to, was referred to as black and black crime. But when a white man kills a white man, it's not referred to white and white crime. These type of terms, double speak, and other types uh, of uh, uh, usage of language or abusage of language. This type of abuse of language is common that when the establishment knighted Salman Rushdie and recently the Queen awarded Salman Rushdie, he was given an honor, 
honorary award, along with 40 other people. One of them was, unfortunately, Quinton Blake, whom I feel sorry for because Quinton Blake was a co-illustrator co with Roald Dahl. And Roald Dahl was the one who referred to Salman Rushdie in 1988 as a twit. He used the appropriate word. He referred to, a Salma, to Salman Rushdie as a twit, so, uh, the title of one of his books, The Twits. So Salman Rushdie was a, is a twit, but the Queen awarded him, and we must be intelligent with regard to this. Firstly, Salman Rushdie was awarded, but the references Salman Rushdie makes to the Queen herself in the Satanic Verses are ignoble, repulsive, that I cannot even utter those references to the Queen. He refers to the Queen with repulsive language and imagines her in ways which is ignoble in his novel, The Satanic Verses. Yet the Queen knighted him and awarded him. This tells us what type of establishment we are dealing with. That he insults Margaret Thatcher, he insults the English establishment, he insults English white women, he insults the Queen. He uses derogatory language regarding them. They award him. So the type of establishment we are dealing with globally is an establishment with that ghayra. What is ghayra? Ghayra is if a man is walking down the road and someone insults with his sister or his wife or his daughter and someone insults his wife, then the man has ghayra regarding the honor of his household. The establishment has none of this and Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein proved this. So, when we are dealing with an establishment with no ghayra, how should we respond to them? For instance, the French establishment and the Charlie Hebdo cartoons, I mentioned this at that time, but people have short memories, is that I said that caricatures and cartoons should be made by Muslim magazines regarding the French flag and the French constitution. French people will be insulted by that. But they will not mention the right of freedom of speech, to execute the right of freedom to speak, uh, freedom to speak, the, uh, the right of freedom of expression, because you have insulted that which is dear to them, which is the French constitution and the French flag. Similarly, there are ways of countering those insults in ways which are much more effective, like in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the poets of Quraysh, they would insult Islam and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam placed Sayyiduna Hassan bin Thabit Radiallahu Anhu on the pulpit to counter their poetry. So poetry was countered with poetry. As for military warfare, then we know the Hadith states that when the Muslims, when you abandon al-jihad, and you grab onto the, the tails of cows, meaning you busy yourself with dunya, and in the, also in the narration, that when you, st when you withhold your zakat, you do not distribute your zakat, and also in the narration, that you fall into haram trade, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place disgrace upon you. So if Muslims are engrossed in riba, interest, usury, if Muslims are engrossed in khamar, alcohol, if they are engrossed in zina, fornication, and lose all ghayra, and if Muslims are engrossed in all types of muharramat and abandoning jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah disgraces them. That is the solution. The solution is in the hadith. But for the time being, when they make caricatures regarding anything Islamic, then our artists must respond. Our magazines must respond. When, a, when this movie has been made, our Sunni filmmakers must respond with a documentary placing the true facts. A documentary giving evidence, the counter evidence giving the counter-narrative. Our Sunni journalists and other intellectuals, writers, must counter novels with novels. When they write novels, he wrote the satanic verses, our authors 
must be creative and write counter narratives. This is the most effective method of countering this uh, global Islamophobia, this term Islamophobia, which was con coined by them. I'll use the term, but it's coined by them for this Islamophobia by the, of the kuffar. So in India currently, I would request people to make dua, firstly for the people of Kashmir, who have been in a constant concentration camp, and they've been under lockdown before the lockdown that occurred across the world for uh, the, uh, the so-called pandemic. But now, make dua for the Indian Muslims that they can effectively counter the BJP. And the leadership in India devise an effective approach that has maximum, uh, maximum effect in, within the public and within the, the political arena within India. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us effective in how we respond to these type of things with consistency. And I remind you regarding the event in the masjid, SBC Masjid, One College Road, B13 in Birmingham, B13 9LS, 6 p.m. on Sunday regarding these three issues, regarding the narrative of the movie, the narrative, the false narrative of the Rawafid, and the political agenda behind the movie, and the reaction of the Muslims and how we can make our reaction more effective as well as what is occurring now in India with the uh, the insulting comments made by the politician, uh, the Indian politician, not stateswoman because statesmen have repl uh, been replaced by politicians now. And the third one is what response do Muslims have when men like Salman Rushdie are given these awards. These are issues that our mufakkirin, our thinkers need to respond to. Inshallah, we will open up for questions and answers. Uh, inshallah, the questions will be read out to me. And uh, or I will be given a, a, a device to read out any relevant questions. There's a question in regards to the Ahbash who insulted Ibn Amir Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Why is the position of Ahl Sunnah towards Jama'at on them? So someone's asked, Sheikh, please could you reiterate the exact situation between Amir Muawiyah and Sayyiduna Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhuma? Yes, a fitna, a tribulation did occur in the time after the martyrdom of Sayyiduna Uthman radiallahu anhu. Sayyiduna Uthman radiallahu anhu was martyred by a group of uh, a rabble rousers from Egypt. After they had martyred Sayyiduna Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a tribulation occurred. After which a war ensued between two large groups of companions. But let me simplify this for you. Aqil bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu is the brother of Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu. He was on the side of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. What is the position of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah? The position of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is Aqil bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was a companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We respect him and hold him in high reverence. Yet Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu was an al-haq, on the truth. What is the Shia Rafdi position? They believe Aqil bin Abi Talib was misguided and was under a debt. He was indebted to Muawiyah and therefore turned tailcoat on his own brother. Waliyadu billah, such type of history narrative they have. Asked the Rawafid regarding 
other a'imma to ahlil bayt. So they say they only have 12 a'imma to ahlil bayt. Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah have numerous a'imma. When we say we follow all the imams, what's their view on Imam Zayd? What's their view on Imam Ismail? What's their views on the offspring of Sayyiduna al-Imam al-Hassan radiyallahu an, Abdullah al-Mahad and others radiyallahu an. They curse all those that progeny of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they believe they did not follow the correct Imams. So who are the real Nawasib, haters of the Ahlul Bayt, not the Ahlul Sunnah? The Ahlul Sunnah have a consistent narrative of the Ahlul Bayt from the time of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until today. So our position is the position of Al-Imam Al-Hassan, the position of Al-Imam Al-Hussein, radiyallahu anhuma, who made peace with Muawiyah, and they would go to his palace, the Bani Umayyah uh, area in the old city of Damascus, and they would visit him. They ate with him numerous times. This was the position of the Ahlul Bayt. We are the real followers of the Ahlul Bayt. Even a Sahifa to Sadiqa, the scroll of Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an is preserved in the Sunni works, the narrations of Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an. In fact, Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an has more narrations than Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an in the Sunni works. So we have very few narrations for, uh, regarding from Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, but we have more narrations from Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an. Uh, one brother states, Imam Ali السلام, will deal with the Shia, uh, the Rawafid on the Day of Judgment, Yawm Al Qiyamah, and the Rawafid will be in eternal remorse. Of course, Sayyidun Ali radiallahu an will deal with the Munafiqin as he narrated that he will turn people away from the Hawd, from the basin of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Amongst them are those who insulted the Shaykhin. Are there any additional questions? So inshallah, we will be finishing here because there are not many questions with regard to this issue. But I remind everyone on Sunday at 6 p.m. inshallah in this masjid, there will be a conference with regard to uh, the theme of the conference is condemnation of insults to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a broad topic because it includes Charlie Hebdo, it includes Salman Rushdie, it includes uh, those who insult the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to gain political uh, benefit, those monetary benefit. And how do we counter those people? How do we respond to those people? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to make our response effective. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa atubu ilayh. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maahu ahluh. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين